I would like to go through the process of cultivating soil in a small field that the farmers in the mountainous area of Marumori town are doing. I hope you enjoy. Here, three types of fertilizers are used to prepare the fields in advance. The first thing I am going to do is add some chicken manure. I put about 8 to 10 bags in a field of about 10 meters by 10 meters. Next, I will add this organic lime to the field. For a field of about 10 meters by 10 meters, I use about one bag of 20 kilograms. I also add a bag of chemical fertilizer. It is said that a pH level of 6 to 7 is very suitable for growing vegetables. I measure the pH at the beginning and end of the process to prepare the soil for farming. First, I measure the current pH level. In order to measure it, I will sprinkle water on the soft soil of the field. I will put this pH meter here. Now I will leave it for 30 minutes to measure the current pH of the soil. The first thing I will do is to spread the fermented chicken manure. In Japan, it is about 100 yen for 15 kilograms. It costs about 100 yen for 15 kilograms. OK, I'll open it up. Here's what's inside. It contains dried and fermented chicken droppings. I'll start spreading this. Now let's move on to organic lime. I will put it here. This costs about 1,000 yen in Japan. I will open this. It is mostly calcium. Eggshells and things like that are the main ingredients. I will spread the organic lime. And finally, the third type, I will add the chemical fertilizer which consists of nitrogen, phosphoric acid and potassium. I will put one bag of this in this field. Home improvement stores sell these for about 1,000 yen. The fertilizer is in granular form like this. Lastly, I am going to plow. At my house, I use this little power tiller to do the plowing. I plow until the soil becomes soft like this. I plow about 20 centimeters deep. There is still some grass on the surface. This will rot and turn into fertilizer. So I can leave it here.
It starts with getting the chicken manure out. I take out the chicken manure, mix in the fermentation bacteria at the same time and bring the mixture into the storage area. After I bring it to the storage area, I mix it with some that has been fermented. It's like feeding a moisture-controlled fertilizer into a machine. I'll use the agitator from earlier to add oxygen while mixing. I move it around, mix it up, add air and move it forward. Eventually, I will let it rest. It's a process of sifting to make the product. Eggs are the main source of revenue. Chicken manure is a byproduct we end up with. To make this into fertilizer, it's a mechanized system. You can look at it as an added bonus or burden. As for the revenue, it's not so much compared to the cost. That's what the situation is. You know what the worst part is? We can't clean up the chicken droppings that are produced ourselves, and to have an industrial waste company clean them up will prove very costly. Because industrial waste companies have their own capacity, there's no place to put them if they are over capacity. It will just pile up. Some people will dump it illegally or have to do something else illegal. In order to prevent this, we need to ferment it and turn it into fertilizer. We are trying to get agricultural cooperatives and farmers as consumers to use this method. For chicken manure, it's not just about fermentation as you've seen. There are also some vegetables that can be used raw. So if there is a lot, we need to think of a way to ferment it so that it can be used more. If there is not too much, you can let it rest. If you let it rest, it can be fermented without the use of mechanization. Therefore, we need to decide how much to use in relation to the amount you produce and how to use it effectively if you don't want to mechanize it. There are a lot of vegetables that can be grown with raw manure, so using chicken manure is not limited to fermentation. But crops can also be grown using raw manure. I load the cow manure from the barn into this wheelbarrow. I bring it in and let it rest here. I let it rest here to let it mature. At that time, I mix it with rice bran to make it more nutrient rich. The idea is to let the crop absorb it. The rice bran that is produced when rice is polished is quite useful. You can also use it to boil bamboo shoots. It's rice bran, so it's really the best part. Before it becomes white rice, it has a sweetness to it. You can pick it up and smell it, and it feels sweet. You can put this to good use as bait. We also use it to lure in animals such as wild boars. I can't exactly say what the ingredients are, but it makes the crop that comes out of the field where it is used sweeter. 
I believe in it, and I use it for all my fields and rice paddies. I spread this rice bran and let the compost rot and mature. That's what I use. I spread evenly and flatly in many layers. I build up layers, move it around and dig it up again like this. I do it this way. For the stuff that I take out of the barn, I step on it like this. Because of the pressure, fermentation will advance. It's more than just leaving it there. We don't have a composting barn like this inside. If you pile it up in the field, it will be exposed to rain and wind. The ingredients can be lost if you do that. Because that's not the case here, it is fine. I am happy with it. If it is not like this, it will soak in slowly. But if it rains, the excess ingredients are basically swept away. I leave it like this and then bring it out of the barn again. The truth is, to be fully ripe, you let it sit for six months or so. In the meantime, you can reload again if you are meticulous. Once it's loaded, I move it around again, which makes it more mature. This raw material is straw and rice husk. I mix this together and let the cows step on it. I put it in the barn and let the cows step on it. Then I take it out again. I then return it to the rice paddies and fields. That's the cycle. I put the manure in that round tank over there. If you calculate the capacity, you'll find that it's usually dry in about a week. It's not fully mature yet though. This is what it looks like when it's dry. Most of this is things like bait skins like this. By passing it under these chips, you can deodorize it, but not 100%. You can deodorize it or make it evaporate. Something like that. It's all sludge and sewage coming in here. And that's where the activated sludge is. Denitrification is performed by doing this. Nitrogen is being drained and released. We have an anti-pollution agreement with the town and the local residents and we test the sewage once a month. This is something that we really have to do right. That is something that costs a lot of money. However, we need to make sure that we follow environmental laws to get by. So that's what we're doing now. Sludge is always produced when you are using a septic tank. I mix that sludge with dry pig manure 
and again in that long fermentation house, turning it into compost. I then let it rest for about six to eight months. Then I carry it into the farmhouse. Here's the thing. Composting used to be a really popular thing to do. People used to do it, but as the population got older and older, and as gardening houses were built, people stopped using it. That's why we've bought a sprayer, and we're using it in large rice paddies, orchards and other things like that. Otherwise, it would be very difficult to spray due to the ageing population, but there's so much power in compost. Now it's mostly from various places like China, so we're importing raw materials for chemical fertilisers for that kind of compost. Pigs in particular have more phosphorus and potassium than most cows. That's why it is said to produce a sweet taste. That's how I became a promoter of rice paddies, fruit trees, vegetables and other things, and that's what I'm doing now. Now let me explain the process. I put the pulverised bamboo chips at the bottom. I then put sandwich method compost on top of it. And then we'll add another layer of bamboo chips, followed by a second layer of sandwich with cow compost. And then we'll cover it with bamboo chips to finish it off. During the finishing process, the heat from the fermentation process will cause it to decompose. So it will take about one to three months. By the time you've finished it and cut it back to finish it, it will take about three to six months. As for the compost, it can supply nutritious minerals and all the nutrients that the soil is lacking. Let's begin the work now. あ、そう、今、今のスコップ置いたね。さっきの。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっ
今度沖縄の陰で引っ張ってもらって,、ね、っって,もらって上に。話しいお話でしたね<笑>。<笑>これで、Now we're done preparing the compost. I'm going to start cutting back in a month or two while monitoring the temperature and aim to complete it in three to six months. That is all. Here's the finished product that was made based on 10 litres. It's a fermentable material that can be added to this compost to make even better quality compost, which can be used to grow crops. This makes them disease resistant and taste good. This makes it possible to grow crops close to pesticide free, so it can be used to make safe and delicious food. Therefore, I believe that there are some vegetables that do not have the true taste of vegetables due to pesticides. So nowadays, organic and pesticide-free farming is becoming less and less popular. For this reason, the most important thing is to make the field weed-free, which is the most difficult thing to do. It's hard to do that without relying on pesticides. I also did it this year, but the summer was hot and there was a lot of rain. So it was hard to keep up with the normal manual work, so some of the crops we planted could not be harvested. However, I still want to make and eat delicious and safe food. That we can live with. And I also give it away to people I know. I also sell a small amount of the food our family can't eat at the market. We have also received feedback from consumers saying that the taste is different. I think that this is the result of our Ehime AI, bamboo chips, and organic low pesticide practices. That's how I see it. If you make this and finish it, it will last quite a while, not just a year or so. It is normally used in the kitchen in daily life. Although I don't use it there, I spray it around the fields when the crops look a little weak. I think the crops look a little more energetic when I do this. They smell nice, and I think the degree to which it is complete is when the smell is perfect. That's how I make a judgment. It's finished. This is a product of bamboo chips used with compost. It is over a kilogram. The development is rather good for this area. For this reason, the flavor is very sweet. It has a high sugar content. So it's normal for people to use it as tororo, or grated yam. I've heard that the taste is so good that it's enough to eat just as tororo, especially with rice, and I think so too. I think that the desired effect has been produced. 
That is what I have been working on. In the Marumori Zambia project, we are distributing a variety of seeds to small-scale farmers in Zambia to grow. This is an initiative to create a diversity of crops in Zambia, which generally tends to be dominated by maize cultivation, a staple food. We are also working on the cultivation of various types of crops with the aim of generating income by selling the surplus of the crops. There are many things that need to be addressed when growing crops such as pest and disease control. Soil preparation is one of the most important things to do. It is important to keep the soil in good condition for growing crops and to produce healthy and vigorous crops to prevent damage from pests and diseases and to ensure stable production. Here in Marumori town, there are people who are working on soil cultivation in various ways. Things that are commonly used include cattle manure and chicken manure. There are people who use compost made from livestock waste. Not only that, but they also use bamboo, a specialty of the town. Some also use charcoal to promote soil improvement, and some use enzymes such as Ehime AI to make better compost and for soil cultivation. People are working on soil preparation in various ways. During training in Japan through the Marumori Zambia project, people learned from farmers and dairy farmers who make compost how to make and use enzymes such as Ehime AI, and we have also had training at a farmhouse working on natural farming focusing on soil development. Each person is working on soil preparation, utilizing what they have available in their own way. Based on the Marumori Zambia project's training in Japan, some of the project sites in Zambia are currently working on composting to improve soil conditions by using familiar materials. Soil preparation is a deep process. It is not easy to improve the soil condition. What we can do is limited by the original soil conditions, weather conditions and the availability of organic matter in the area. What is important is making a continuous effort while making use of what is available around you. 
The use of compost to build up the soil is important and essential for the sustainable cultivation of crops. But not everyone can get what they want and make compost. The important thing is to use what you have around you effectively and not waste it. Furthermore, soil conditions vary from region to region and climate to climate. What works in Japan does not necessarily work in every country. Nonetheless, it is important to work on preparing the soil so that we can grow crops using the things around us in the situation we are in. How do we prepare the soil from now on? In fact, this is where there was damage two years ago. There's about 60 centimetres of sand deposited from that. So at that time, I had the soil removed from the top. The soil here is no longer a field at all. So I am trying to make the soil from nothing. First of all, we are happy to see that weeds can grow before we can grow crops. The roots of the grass till the soil, so if you pull them out, the soil will harden. No oxygen can get in if that happens. Such soil is impermeable to water. The power of living things causes water and air to flow through the soil. That is why you do not pull weeds out. You mow and you mow by hand. It's called mowing by the wind, so regeneration of the earth. The basic thing is creating a flow of water and air to the earth. This is edamame, those are soybeans, those are leaves. The reason why soybeans are planted is because we use something called soybean rhizobium bacteria. Rhizobium bacteria is atmospheric nitrogen specific to soybeans. It is stored in roots like beans. It is the crop that holds it in place underground. It's a very clever crop. This bumpy stuff is rhizobium bacteria. This is where the field gets nitrogen from. This is a field where we'll take that nutrient and grow eggplants and peppers. So there's no fertilizer, no pesticides, nothing. Then we sow the wheat next in the fall. Wheat can take root over 60 centimetres. Then there are the places on the land where we have been farming for years, with the help of pesticides and chemical fertilizers. This is called a hard pan, and it's made of hard soil. It's the root of the wheat that makes it less hard. The wheat will take deep roots, and it's so powerful that it can break through a hard pan. If you alternate between wheat and soybeans, you can make nitrogen, and that makes for soft soil. Now, in the second year, we've made it this far. And that's when the rootworms came in. To get rid of rootworms, I use bamboo vinegar solution. Marumori is full of thriving bamboo. That is why we are making charcoal, bamboo charcoal, and bamboo vinegar solution is made from this. This is a cycle too. You dilute it about 300 times and keep it on for a long time. After applying it, it is still like it's already dead. This is a pesticide called tedetol, and it means take by hand. <laughs> This is 70-point rice husk fumigated charcoal, which is still raw. 
まだ名前があるので。This is because if you tighten the lid of the drum tightly, the air is cut off and it becomes real charcoal. When the drum is filled to about 70% with rice husks, you mix it up once and add it again. The black stuff on the top starts to look like this. You have to cover it with the residual heat. Iron mineral is the nutrient solution made from using the tannins found in the crops soaked in water with iron rust. Iron is something that crops need. You don't hear too much noise about iron. I don't think it's something that people know much about. I made this with the juice from the persimmon tannins I made in the summer. This is tannin iron mineral. You can see that this white container has already turned black. This is the same one, but it is a red container. I thought it wouldn't be possible to tell what color it was, so I put it in a white container as well. This is the color. This one has a rusty nail or something in it. It's a nutrient that can be used after five days. Leave it alone with some tannin astringent in the water. Tea leaves can also be used. Persimmons are harvested when they are still green in Japan. They can be crushed and it's even better if you rub them. You can leave it as it is or squeeze the juice out of it. Chestnuts are also good and they are mashed and added. By using crops that contain tannins, you can build up soil productivity in the field. It's like a nutrient. This is bamboo powder. Bamboo is cut down and chipped to make chips. There is a machine that plants the chips. It's like a mincing machine for making ground meat, if you can imagine that. You put the chunks of meat in from the top, and when you put them in, they'll come out ground from here. There's a big machine for that. You put bamboo chips in there. In the case of bamboo, the heat is already at least 70 degrees and it is kneaded inside, so the fibers are broken down. It comes pushed out of the hole. If you put that much pressure on it, it is made into a powder with broken fibers. That is what we call bamboo powder. I'm using it as a soil conditioner. With the help of lactic acid during the fermentation process, it is like making compost.
By eliminating food residue, we are trying to help out the cycle of life. We use leftover food, put it in this and make compost. When the compost is mature, it can be used in the field. It can be used for things like making a flower bed. The idea is to make it something that can be used for home gardening. I mix bamboo powder with rice bran. Rice bran is an accelerant for lactic acid fermentation. It helps and it will ferment at a heat of about 65 degrees. You can use the power of fermentation to mix food. I come by every day and put all the leftovers from the house in here. It's a good idea to mix it in because it needs some moisture. If it's too dry, it won't ferment. It ferments with a certain amount of heat and water is needed. I put about half of it in a pot this big every day. After that, I add water and move it around. You repeat the process of mixing them together. If you leave it alone for a day, it's already warm inside. I think it's about 40 degrees. This kind of leather will melt or disappear in about two days. Small root vegetables might take a week or so. Eggshells also take a lot of time, but I mix and blend them together. When you want to use it, this is for something else. I've already emptied it, so I don't add any more. I'm only moving it around here. As I said before, I'm sowing 20-day-old radish seeds. When they sprout, this is already a fully mature compost. You can use it in the field or wherever you want. This is the kind that won't harm your crops. The bad thing about compost is that it has too much nitrogen. Putting bittern or something like that on crops, I think is called adding. It's the kind of thing that can go bad if it's not fully mature, even if they say it's compost. Nitrogen is not the same as the rhizobium bacteria I mentioned earlier, and there is no need for that much in the soil. There is a certain percentage of nitrogen, phosphoric acid and potassium. Most of those chemical fertilizers are vaporized into the air. It does not stay in the soil. If it did stay, it would go underneath to create a hard bed layer. It would create a chain reaction. When preparing the soil with natural products in this way, we don't have these kinds of problems and crops such as bitter cucumbers cannot grow. It produces sweet cucumbers. <laughs> The bugs are coming in. That's how they got in here. It's okay for the bugs to get in. Let's turn this over. It's got these things in it. It has things like food. This is cabbage and this apple skin. This is probably from this morning. It's the stuff I put in this morning. This is exactly what it looks like. It's the banana I put in this morning. The one I put in this morning is still whole like this. Do you know what this is? It's a pineapple. Looks just like it did before.
This means that these things are dry. It means it won't break down. In these cases, I'll add water. That's why I filled it with water this morning. That's about as hard as it'll get. This is the best you can do. Flies will come. If they lay eggs, there will be maggots. There are aerobic fermentation and anaerobic fermentation. This is aerobic fermentation because it likes sunlight. It encourages fermentation at a favourable temperature. Anaerobic fermentation is the fermentation of unpleasant air. You put up a blue sheet for this. Fermentation by blocking out the light is called aerobic fermentation. I come here every morning. I mix it up, have a cup of coffee with the owner and chat a bit. It's my daily routine.